Yep, stack it to look shoes. Oh, that was kind of big. Blessed assurance, Jesus is vine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation purchased by God. I'm born of his spirit and washed in his blood. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we are here to honor a phenomenal woman this evening. I'm sure you would agree that she was and is a queen in her own right. Amen? Yes. I ask that you would pray with me. Actually, not to pray with me, but just to greet you on behalf of, of the Hardy family that you've come out and support. I know that they have felt your heartfelt prayers and your wishes and on behalf of the Hardy family, I want to say thank you. Amen? Yes. I would like to call up Reverend Alicia Heath Toby to give us a prayer of comfort. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is a celebration. Amen. This is a celebration. I know that it seems heavy because Mama's not here no more. But her legacy, her legacy is phenomenal. So this is a celebration. Patty, Dan, and my Rose. Please join me as we go before the throne of grace. God, we are so grateful for who you are in this moment. Lord, we know that when our loved ones depart from us, that there's a heaviness, there's a sorrow, but we are reminded that you will be present with us in every single moment. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us space and room and the friends and the family that are here today to, to, to lay and rest in their arms and to talk about the memory of Queen Betty when they need to. Lord, comfort the family tonight, Lord. And days to come, remind them that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And their joy, whenever that morning comes, it's their personal morning. And so we are grateful for how you will show up in their lives, Lord God, beyond this day. 
We thank you, Lord God, for who Queen Betty was. Uh, we thank you for how she touched the lives of each and every person in this room. She's a testimony of what it means to be a woman of God. And so we thank you, Lord God, for her life. We thank you for the example of who she was and who she will continue to be. So as they go through the next few days and months and years and the tears may flow, let them be reminded that you are with them. That the spirit of their mother is with them. And so we thank you, God. We thank you for all that you will do as you comfort them, as you give them reason to rejoice. For it is well with our souls. And if the people of God know that God is able to do all things but fail, let us say amen, amen, amen. 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 Let us receive Minister Kalita Frey as she will read the Old and the New Testament scriptures. Good evening. Good evening. Our Old Testament reading will come from Psalm 27, 4 through 5, the New International Version. And it reads as such, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Verse five, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of John 4, verse 13. And it reads as such, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. And the words of the Lord is always and forever blessed. Amen. We will now have a hymn of praise led by Brother Washington. You can find the words in the back of that beautiful program that you have in your hands. And we will sing, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior.
Aleluya. 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 Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling. Please, Jesus. Please, Savior. Please, Master. Do not pass me by. Don't pass me by in my grief. Don't pass me by because I need you to comfort me. I'm calling, Savior. Hear my humble cry. Someone say hallelujah. Ain't he all right? Hallelujah. David wrote in the 23rd Psalm something beautiful. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. You know it for his name's sake. This is the part I like. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with, with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Someone shout amen in this place. Thank you, Jesus. That's now that we would receive our sister Gloria Chisholm born as she comes with acknowledgments. Thank you. Glory. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. With sympathy in the loss of your mother, she is not far. She is always near in the memories that you hold most dear, in the hearts that still care, in the love that goes on. She will never be far. She will never be gone. May you be comforted in the memories of your mother, and in being so remembered, may her legacy live on. With caring thoughts and sympathy, Evelyn, your neighbor. Nothing love is ever lost. No one who has ever touched a heart can really pass away, because memories remain and love lives on. With deepest sympathy, your coworkers at St. Joseph. with heartfelt sympathy in your loss. In times like this, there's so much we don't understand. So all that's really left is to hold on tight to the one who does. Praying for comfort and peace for each of you as only God can give. Your church, Restoration Temple Ministries Cathedral. On behalf of the Hardy family, they like to wish, they wish, I'm sorry, to express their appreciation for your kindness, your expressions of love. They are most appreciative of all of your kindness and thoughtfulness shown by both family and friends during this time. Knowing you are there has always given them much needed solace and fortitude. Thank you for all of your prayers, all forms of communication, the beautiful plants and flowers, 
as well as each and every act of kindness bestowed upon them. Thank you. Church Resolution of Respect for Betty Dolores Hardy. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. We, the members of Victory Nation Church, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to bid a Christian goodbye to a precious and valiant woman, Dolores, Betty Dolores Hardy, the mother of Roseanne, Dan, and Patty Ann, mother-in-law, sister, grandmother, and friend. Whereas Betty Dolores Hardy professed a hope in Christ at an early age and was a member of her church, Calvary Baptist Church. Whereas Betty Dolores Hardy was a reverent woman who loved the Lord and a very independent person who would perform any task and instilled in her family to follow her example. She loved her family with a gentle yet stern combination which only she possessed. Whereas, not only is this a loss of a devoted mother, but also a confident counselor and closest of friends, a person who was always available to share an encouraging word and demonstrate strong support. Whereas, the passing of our beloved sister is God's gain, is heaven's gain, and there is a human tie that has been broken which bleeds the heart in agony and pain. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus, who said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake them. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace Betty Dolores Hardy, but will attempt to demonstrate her love for you. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. More importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Humbly submitted on this second day of February, 2023, the officers and members of Victory Nation, Camden, New Jersey, the Right Reverend Yvonne M. Harrison, Senior Pastor. We will now have uh, two remarks uh, on behalf of Mother Hardy, and I assure you, you are in for a treat of some wonderful stories uh, of who this wonderful woman was. Uh, we will have our first remark from her godson, Kenneth Threat. Hi. Hi. I have to take a mask off. <laughs> yes, yes. No. No mic. No mic. Thanks to my godmother, I call her Aunt Betty. She was like my aunt. I had seven of them. Well, yeah. And unlike them, she instilled, pardon me, pardon me to do this. I lost my mother last year, well, the year before, 21. And they were the best of friends. They grew up together and went to Eastside High School together mm -hmm. in Patterson. And I have to tell you, I wrote down what I wanted to say on a piece of paper, but after hearing the word and seeing the light, some things just don't translate well on words mm. on paper. Yes. Oh. So I'd rather 
keep this short because as an actor, I cry a lot. <laughs> as a human being, professing my love, I cry even more. I, uh, looking at Aunt Betty, and I have to tell you, she gave me a lot. She gave me my first classic album of, well, I'm a violinist. I started the violin. She was trained as my mother, operatically, and they sang and played piano as music teachers. And it's because of Aunt Betty, I have a love and I need to hear a Baruch, a Baruch Italian, Italian Baruch on Friday evenings. She gave me my first start in filmmaking. And I made my first short film, seven minutes and 55 seconds long, in her backyard. <laughs> BYOB was entitled. <laughs> you won't see it. <laughs> Aunt Betty, the crew, by the way, came to me and asked Ken, what do we call her? I didn't tell her, tell them her last name. So they thought, can I, can we call her uh, Miss Betty, Miss what? And I said, well, you figure it out, and they did. She became Aunt Betty to them, and she liked it. This is a woman of pure Christian love, a beautiful person, glamorous, classy. Oh yeah, let me tell you about the classiness. I was blessed to be brought up, oh my, born in 52, all right, anybody do the math, I'll shoot you later. <laughs> I was brought up in the time when the black middle class was emerging in America, where the Playboy Club was not a, a symbol of, like, hustler. No, it was, it was a time when people were growing and maturing at, in the Middle Ages. Well, the, not Middle Age, but, you know. My father built a bar, a place where he and his friends intellectuals can hang out in the basement and they would dress for it. Now who dresses up for a bar in the basement? After all, the Russians were coming. And my mother and Aunt Betty and the neighbors and Patterson would party in that basement in class, style. They played big band music. It was hard for me to get used to, but I liked it. And I learned something. I learned that class is not delegated to people who have loud amplifiers right. Right. and dress in raggedy clothing mm -hmm. and wear their hair which way, well, no, skip the hair part. But <laughs> <laughs> class comes from within. That's right, you tell it. You, you grow character. You develop character, but it doesn't grow by itself. It's nurtured through love. Mm -hmm. If there is no love, well, you have a lot of empty words. Mm -hmm. Aunt Betty never gave you an empty word. Mm -hmm. She gave my mother birthday cards of my birth. She was my godmother. And I learned a lot from her. And I'm passing it to you so that you may pay it forward. Don't ever come to a funeral with a pen and paper to remember what you wrote. <laughs> because all of this is coming off the cuff. But I want to thank you for coming tonight. I want to thank you for bearing the cold and the beautiful heart music. Well, should we give a hand? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Good taste. I like Holtz of the Planets. That was excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. But when I die, I definitely want to hear some Pink Floyd. This is really good. <laughs>
I want to thank you both for being your honest and being my girlfriend. Susan and I have been together for 31 years. Wow. We're actors. Well, she's now an actor in Law and Order. We met on the set of Law and Order. Wow. And what a surprise to show that. But it, it's, it keeps us together. And that's because we like to create. This is how God's gift to us is to create. Yeah. Take a blank piece of paper, I write now. So I write words, and then someone puts music to it, and I have a screenplay, I have a musical. Thanks to the Lord. The Lord has brought us together. And Aunt Betty nurtured that too. Thank you for having me up here. Thank you for Thank you for giving her honor. I said I was going to cry so many of you now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Aunt Betty. Thank you. God bless. We will now have remarks from Queen Betty's wonderful sister, who I've had the privilege to talk with and spend some time with. Can you please receive and respect? I call her Aunt Virginia now, she's family. You would dishonor her as she comes up. I had my own bedroom, 
And I must have awakened and it was dark. There was a light on, but it was dark. And no one was around. I started crying. And um, no, Mama didn't come to my side. So I, uh, I got real upset. I got real nervous. I, maybe I was three years old, you know, something like that. And um, Betty must have heard me. She, Betty was very, always very cerebral. I'm just like Patty. <laughs> you know, far more than I am, but um, they, they, they're my role models now. But anyhow, Betty must have heard me. And she came down the stairs, and she got me, took me out of my room, out of my bed, took me upstairs with her in her room, and put me in the bed with her. She comforted me, you know, she uh, made me feel safe. And um, I don't know when my mother or father came home, you know, but Betty, that's, that's what Betty had been taught to do by her mother. And that's what my father was doing, like with this, having his sister and brother yeah. in the house, yeah. launching their career. They're looking out for the younger ones. Yeah. Another example, um, I, this is early childhood in the, um, um, just after the war. Yeah. I must have been about five or six years old, five years old or less. Because when Betty and Eddie got married, I was already seven years old. And we had the big house wedding. But um, I, rem well, I, I remember that Betty used to take me, she was helping her mother. She would wash my little arms and my little legs, you know, and sponge bathing me or bathing me for my mother and father. And um, she, I guess she was practicing for when she would be uh -huh. a teacher. And she took care of me. I was like her little, and I wasn't just her little baby sister. I was like uh, her little girl, which I understand um, that a lot of young women do that, you know, with practice. I remember one time, and I don't know how old I was, but my hair caught, my head caught on fire, my hair, and um, it was inside the house. And I, I won't elaborate on the details. <laughs> Not too much, I'll just tell you. What it was, it was in the kitchen, my mother was doing Betty's hair. And they had, in the old days, they had the hot curling up. Yeah. 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 And she must have been, um, you know, had, that's why the, fi the fire was on the stove. But on the stove also was a large container that Mama kept with it. She kept all the grease. Yes. I don't know whether any of Oh, yeah, we got one. Yeah. 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 I've got one on yeah. my yeah. But you yeah. had your bacon yeah. grease and, you know, yeah. stuff yeah. up there. Yeah. And yeah. you could yeah. pour it, yeah. you know, in your pan before you uh, yeah. made your string yeah. beans or yeah. your vegetables, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. when I put my head back, uh, see, they weren't paying, they were talking. Betty and Mama, I guess, and I put my head back, you know, towards the fire because the house was, was it was electric, not electric, it was gas on the stove, gas back in then, those days. Um, anyhow, I kept putting my head back and I could hear, I was 
washing the kitchen floor, you know, doing the kitchen or the bathroom. She always had that opera on the radio on Saturday afternoon, and it still comes on now, of course. The Metropolitan Opera Broadcast, Saturday from, I guess, around noon to about three in the afternoon, depending on whatever their, their performance is, if it's longer, you know, it lasts longer. But Betty, uh, I could hear that music. I could hear that music. Melville could hear it. And of course, we're both lovers of the arts, um, fine arts. And I didn't pursue that in school, and I've got to tell you what I did, but that's another story. But, you know, another time. Um, it, I think Betty had a profound what I'm saying, influence. Yeah. Uh, you do reach children, they yeah. hear this stuff. Yeah. Now that's not to take away from Bess, my mother, Bessie, or Marshall, my father, because uh, Kenneth did allude to um, the, black, the black middle class coming along. Mm -hmm. And um, my people were always lovers of the arts, you know, the fine arts. And, Gave it, you heard me t tell me about my mother taking me to New York. She took us to see the, all the plays and the ice capades, the circus, you know. 
on weekends when she didn't have to work, you know, matinees. And I do that to myself now, you know, when I don't go with the senior citizens. <laughs> I, was, I, did, I, did, I went to see Whitney to down at the Kennedy Center. But anyhow, be that as it may, I'm a lover of the fine arts, and I believe it's a result of Betty, because Betty was the original diva, when the only divas around back in those days um, were the opera singers, mm -hmm. the lady opera singers, because of their drama, uh, this kind of thing, uh, which I know Ken is familiar with. All. That old Metropolitan Opera was one beautiful place. Um, I mean, Lincoln Center is beautiful, too. I've been there, but... Um, that original one, that bus, since the school trip took us down, took me down, you know, to see Faust. That was my first opera I saw, Who Loves Faust? And I fell in love with that. I did that, you know, to this day, that's my favorite opera. Um, although, you know, I'm, I'm quite familiar because of Betty with the whole repertoire, you know when they come through the, the different productions. But um, it's Betty's influence, the music. It, it, it caught me, and it probably caught Melville too, because Melville is a lover of the arts. And I must say that my second husband I had, no, blessed to have two husbands, not one. story but that was a beautiful story amen can you please in honor receive uh, Bishop Roseanne Hardy as she comes up to read the obituary as she comes the daughter of Queen Betty amen the obituary of Betty Dolores Hardy. Betty Dolores Hardy, born in 1926 to Marshall and Elizabeth Kirkland of Patterson, New Jersey, passed away peacefully at her home in Patterson on January 28, 2023 at the age of 96. Like her parents, she was a longtime member of Calvary Baptist Church. Betty grew up with two brothers, Vreeland Williams Jr. of Fort Myers, Florida, and Melville Kirkland of Simi Valley, California, both now deceased, as well as a surviving sister, Virginia O. Lindsay of Clinton, Maryland. In 1948, Betty married Edward Evans Hardy, sharing her life with her beloved Eddie for 40 years before his passing in 1989. They are survived by their three children, Roseanne Monica Hardy of Patterson, Dan Evans Hardy of Belleville, New Jersey, and Patty Ann Hardy of Woodside, California, and by her son-in-law, Andrew Ward Norse of Woodside, California, as well as her grandson, Quincy Brayton, his wife, Taylor, and their daughter, Isla, 
of Fairfield, California. She leaves to mourn a godson, Kenneth W. Threat, nieces Nanette Salmon and Nancy Linden, nephews Mel Kirkland Jr., Sidney Kirkland, and Steve Kirkland, a host of cousins, and her longtime neighbor and devoted caregiver, Mrs. Jeanette Mosley. Beyond the blessing of private life, Betty held a doctorate in education from William Patterson Teachers College of New Jersey. As a teacher in the Patterson Public School System, she worked tirelessly and conscientiously for 35 years, educating hundreds, hundreds of children before retiring in 1987. Those fortunate enough to have known Betty will recall her as a vivacious and elegant figure. She had a lifelong passion for music especially opera and ballet. In her youth, she played the piano and painted. In her retirement, she traveled, touring the Alpine castles of Europe, floating over the California wine country in a hot air balloon, and visiting Aruba, Barbados, and other sunny Caribbean islands. That was my mom. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Give an honor to the family, to Bishop Rose Hardy, to Dan, to Virginia, to Patty, Andrew, and our beloved Mrs. Mosley. We appreciate you. We are so honored that you are allowing us to share this moment, moment of reflection, this memorable dialogue that we can have as it pertains to the legacy of your mother. I want to lift up a verse on this evening for those of us who are present on tonight. And this verse is found in Psalm 116, verse 15. Psalm 116, verse 15. And it reads as thus, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death yeah, of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I want to lift up for us this evening a thought that God had put on my heart. The legacy of a good woman. The legacy of a good wife. The legacy of a good teacher. The legacy of a good mother. The most powerful reward for teaching lives with the power to change lives. I want to ascribe the legacy inscription as I share with you the lasting impression etched and engraved into the hearts of those who knew Betty. A wise person once said, to teach is to touch the future. The legacy of a teacher. There are teachers who teach and then there are teachers who make a difference. If you've been a student of Betty, you have been given the gift that lasts a lifetime. She was faithful to her assignment as a mother, a wife, a teacher, and a friend. A teacher takes a hand, opens a mind, and touches a heart. Beloved, I can count on both hands the number of teachers that I've had, from primary to the graduate level who I found inspiring in so many ways. I can count only on one hand the number of teachers who I have received guidance and insight and have made a profound impact and an indelible imprint in my life. I wasn't able to be a student of Dr. Hardy, but after hearing all of the stories, I do believe that many of us in here, you can remember at least one teacher who made a lasting impression on your life. Betty Dolores Hardy was that type of teacher. For 35 years, her tenure as an educator, she worked tirelessly and conscientiously as a teacher in the Patterson public school system, educating thousands of students. Dr. Hardy was brilliant, effective, inspiring, encouraging, caring, and compassionate. Teachers have the opportunity to nurture 
inspire and challenge students to shape their tomorrows. And I believe I can push it and say that there is no profession or vocation more noble, more powerful, or greater of an influence than teaching. Teachers are crucial in the development of youth and the advancement of society as a whole. Now let's go to the legacy of a mother. Dr. Betty Dolores Hardy did that for her students in the classroom, but I can't stop there. She did it first at home for her three children, Roseanne, Dan, and Patty. These three siblings have been fortunate to share their beloved mother with thousands of students, but they saw and experienced and were fortunate enough to glean from their mother, the nurturer, the caregiver, the encourager. They saw and witnessed and embraced their mother's heart, her love for music, her passion for travel. But what I believe that wasn't mentioned on today, the legacy of a wife that Dan and Roseanne and Patty was able to see a mother who was a dedicated wife, honoring and respecting and tending to the needs of their father, Eddie, who shared her life with him for 49 years. Can you imagine a marriage for over 49 years, preceded only by death? The true embodiment of commitment, dedication, loyalty, and honor, Dr. Betty played a critical role in laying the foundation that enabled youth to feel like they belong. She laid the foundation that enabled youth to, to look at a bright future where their hopes and dreams can be their realization. But one of the things she did tonight, in which we, which we look at their children, she inspired them to live purpose-driven lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That their pedigrees reflect the legacy of their mother that their pedigrees reflect the legacy of the teacher, hallelujah. That their pedigrees reflect the legacy of the wife that they saw uh, committed to their father. Dr. Betty's influence has had a relational and a generational impact. So, so as we gather here tonight, we wanna look at Dr. Betty's uh, instilling confidence, her boldness, her courageousness, her self-esteem, and the way she molded so many people in her life. She helped kids to determine hmm, what their values were and what their dreams were. I am grateful that I had one opportunity to serve her communion. And that communion was not what we would see in the upper room, but it was an elegant communion. Hallelujah. <laughs> it was a dainty communion. I don't hear that I don't hear. It was a communion served for a diva. She wanted to know why did I bring communion in a plastic cup? She didn't understand why she had to peel the top of the communion and taste a stale piece of bread. I don't hear nobody in here. It was a communion prepared for a diva. One with class, one with elegance, and one with integrity. And she took the time to teach me about the experience in the upper room. At the heart of such great teaching is grace. Might I add class, elegance, integrity, and grace? The form of spirituality that exudes respect, compassion, and empathy for others. It is a form of personal sacrifice that touches people in a way that makes them believe in themselves. She was the epitome of grace, effortlessly challenging the status quo and serving as a catalyst for change in her classroom and ultimately transforming the lives of people outside the four walls. When you experience Pastor Hardy, or well, Roseanne, or Rosebud. When you experience Dan, or Danny Boy. When you experience, and which I had a chance to meet for the first time tonight, Patty, you experience and you exude the legacy of their mother. That the humility that they operate in, 
the humbleness, the appreciation for people, the appreciation for life, the appreciation for hard work and ethics and values, it comes from what she laid the foundation for. Yes. So as we move to the text, the scripture says, precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. It sounds beautiful and poetic, doesn't it? It seems to suggest that death, in spite of how it feels, is not really such a bad thing. But is any death church really precious in God's sight? How can we attribute the death of a loved one to be precious? How can we attribute the loss of of someone to be precious. The psalmist is saying to us tonight that God doesn't take the death of his saints lightly. That God values each and every one of us in this room. That God values death because it is costly in his sight. Which is why in the case of this particular psalm, God preserved the life of this saint. Dr. Betty was vivacious. Dr. Betty was elegant. Dr. Betty was classy. And Dr. Betty was precious in the sight of God. Elegant in our sight, our, our sight, but precious in the eyes of God. Classy in our sight, but precious in the eye, eye sight of God. So naturally, we want to know why the death of a loved one and the saints is precious. I think we can find numerous reasons. However, in this moment, I would like to remember the words of Jesus. Just before his own death, it is finished. And think of death in the saints of that regard. For every time Pastor Hardy has to care for her mother, for every time that Dan and Patty, and let us not forget Mrs. Mosley, the time that she spent the effortless hours caring for our beloved Mrs. Betty, it is precious in God's sight because when you are a believer, you look like something different to God. That others may look at the external appearance. That others may look at the externalities. That others look at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. Hallelujah. And so the death of a saint can be a witness to the world that the Christian life is brought to a successful conclusion. Mm. Uh, can I say that one more time? Yeah. The death of a saint can be witness to the world that the Christian life can be a successful conclusion. Yeah. That we are released from this earthly bond when our mission is complete. Yeah. And can I suggest and deduce to you tonight that as a teacher, her mission is complete. Yeah. Can I deduce to you tonight that as a wife, her mission is complete. Yeah. Can I deduce to you tonight that as a mother, her mission is complete. Precious in the sight of the Lord of the death of his saints. So now she rests woo, with one of the greatest teachers of all time. Now she is reunited huh, with the great Rabboni, the one who we call Jesus. Huh. She, like Jesus, I'm sure, took an expression and took a model and the representation of how Jesus taught all of his disciples. She was caring just like Jesus. She was compassionate just like Jesus. She was loving just like Jesus. She withstood the test. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but if she had to teach any of us today. <laughs> The death of the saints is precious because it gives witness to those who are still running this race. Mm. Huh. The death of a Christian is precious because it causes us to reflect on the impact according to Virginia and her eloquent ways. Don't you wish you had their genes? Can I just throw that in? Mother Betty just looking fine as wine. And Virginia coming in strutting, letting you know this is what 82 looks like. Don't we wish that we could have the genes of the Hardys? But the death of a Christian is precious because it reflects on the impact and the influence that she had on so many lives. 
that each of us have an opportunity to have the same impact that she had. Each of us have an opportunity in our own unique ways to make an impact on somebody else's life. The death of a Christian is precious because her faith was sincere. The Apostle Paul once said in my conclusion to his son uh, Timothy in the faith, when I think of you, I think of your sincere faith. The sincerity of faith is not only what are seen in somebody that goes to church. But the sincerity of someone's faith is indicative of how you treat other people. And it's clear to me tonight that the sincerity of her faith is manifested in this room. I don't hear nobody in here. I believe the same can be said of Mother Betty today. That when you think of her, you have to consider her faith. And she was an elegant, committed member of Calvary Baptist Church. I want to leave you with this thought. She touched thousands of lives. How many lives have you touched? The reason why this death is precious in the sight of the Lord is because it's not what we do for ourselves while we're living. But it's what we do for those who are left behind. How many lives have you influenced? It's precious in the sight of the Lord. How many lives have you impacted? Her death is precious in the sight of the Lord. How many family members have you driven to their purpose? It's precious in the sight of the Lord. Come on, let's give God a round of applause tonight. To thank um, Aretha. Can we give the funeral home a round of applause as we prepare to leave you in the hands of this great woman of God? As we say the closing prayer, I want you to know that you will be left into her hands. Can you do me a favor? I know it's COVID, but can you just lean and just push your arm against somebody? Father, we thank you tonight for the legacy, the life, the impact, and the influence of Dr. Betty Dolores Hardy. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that her life leaves an imprint, a model for us to be representations, not just of you, Lord, but to be representations of what you have called and purposed for us to do. We thank you for all of the lives that she has impacted. Father, we pray tonight for Betty. We pray tonight, Lord God, for Roseanne. We pray for Dan. We pray for Patty. We pray for all of the family who is mourning tonight. For we know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And Father, to be absent in the body is to be present with you. So Father, you said we don't grieve like them that have no hope. Oh, yes. But we know, dear God, for where our hope comes from. Do not let your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. For if I go, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I go, woo, you might also be. Father, we lift this family up to you tonight. That in the days and weeks to come, when we all go back to our respective homes, God, that you would comfort them. That you would be their guide. That you would be their comfort. That you would be their strength in this difficult time. We know, oh God, that weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning. We honor you and we bless you for all of the years. 96. Woo! That you graced her on this earth. That her purpose and the fulfillment of the destiny that you purpose on her life is now complete. In fact, Timothy said it best. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. And I finished my course. We honor you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' great name we pray. Amen.
family and friends before we come to the close of this evening I have to say to the Hardy family it was an honor to serve you so much has been said this evening there is very little for me to say Miss Virginia almost had it all <laughs> and I know people have asked you to clap before, but I want you to clap like you're outside this building. That for the life, 96 years, I'm trying to get there. All the rest of the Processing with us tomorrow morning. Okay. Please, we will be leaving from no one another, Miss Betty's home. 271 East 28th Street here in the great and wonderful city of Patterson. Please arrive at the home no later than 1115. And make sure you guys leave room for me. Because we got a hearse and a limousine, so don't get there before me and think you got a spot. <laughs> Miss Betty is the one who's got the spot, so please save some room for her. At this time, we're going to start the final viewing. We're going to start from the sides of the chapel, and the ushers will guide you. And after you have said your final goodbyes, please exit the chapel. And everyone, please get home safe. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. Well done. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank
Uh, for those of you attending the repass, uh, Pastor Hardy is asking that you uh, go to 1609 Maple Avenue, Fairlawn. It's called The Craftsman. Again, The Craftsman at 8.30 p.m., 1609 Maple Avenue, 8.30. Thank you.
so we're going to move that over. Where's my key? <laughs> I know, I know it's like that. I didn't do it. You just gotta tell me somebody. Just gotta tell me somebody.
Thank mm -hmm. you.